Uh, one of the things that is important as Christian Dharma ministers and filmmakers is that we want to live long. Okay, we want to outlive as much as possible um, every kind of the enemy so we can do a whole lot more for the Lord and live to see the impact. So it's important we try as much as possible to pay attention to our health, but it starts by knowing the numbers. So you cannot run away from the numbers. This is the part that everybody want to run away from, but you can't run away from it. Sure, I'm going to talk about the numbers you're looking at for cholesterol, blood sugar. These are major risk factors are tied to cardiovascular diseases. But, but major risk factors that we're going to zone on, on is hypertension, diabetes, uh, cholesterol, which is the abnormal blood lipid, and obesity. And those are, I'm going to just share the numbers if you look out for. Your body mass index in a small, in a short word, is just the ratio, the proportion of the fat, of the buildup of your body compared to the, the height, you know, the weight compared to the height. So in terms of formula, it's just um, the weight all over the height. You know, if you're using metric units, it's kilogram over the height squared times, you know, height squared, you know, you know if you multiply the height by itself. Uh, you don't have to do that calculation. There's a lot of tools. So basically, what are you looking for? It's very easy to calculate. You get tools on Google or whatever. She will share with you some of the tools you can use. Look for the numbers. Uh, the numbers you want to look for, there are some variations between male and female, but particularly, you just want to look for numbers between 18.5 and 25. That's a decent place to be if you're looking at your BMI. That BMI affects a whole lot of other things, you know, and it's important that you keep an eye on it. That's why we try to heat LB and all that to keep the weight within range. Um, let's talk about blood pressure for a minute. Now, blood pressure is nothing more than the measure of the force, you know, a pressure. Imagine how if a tap is running, the tap is running, like it's perfused, it pushes the, 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 the fluid. So the, the force with which the heart is pumping the blood against the arteries is what we call the blood pressure. There is a range that's, that should be normal, okay? There is a range that should be normal. The numbers, you know, the top number is called the systolic number, and the lower number is called the diastolic number. The systolic number is uh, the pressure when the heart is pumping. The diastolic is when it's at rest. So that's why the, the upper number is higher, sorry, than the lower number. So the normal range you want to look for in the blood pressure is, if you look at this chart, and I'll spend a few seconds to, to explain this. Now, everybody say 120 over 80, 120 over, that's okay, that's fine. That's a normal range, but you're doing anything, your blood pressure should not be more than 130 over 80. If it's and above 120 over 80, it's considered elevated. Uh, the other standard will say pre-hypertension, but my God, I say considered, it's considered elevated. You know, but if it's 130 over 80 to 139 over 89, it's like stage one hypertension. Now, once you have elevated numbers, you need to start checking it, reduce your salt and some other things that you need to do, exercise and rest a lot and things like that. But, you know, so you change your lifestyle, basically. But once you start having numbers 130 over 80 perpetually, it's important you see a practitioner or a clinician to be able to help you check. There is a way diagnosis has to be made. You cannot diagnose yourself. Now, if you have a blood pressure of one, above 180 or 120, you need to go to the emergency like right away, clinic immediately. Cholesterol. Cholesterol is just fat in the body. They are fat, you know, uh, uh, that is that from food that you eat and your liver. The liver makes most of the fat that the body needs. But sometimes we eat excessive fat, different kinds of trans fat, saturated fat, and so on and so forth. And they come up in different formats. So basically, in layman language, what you need to look out for is uh, the good and the bad fat. The good and the bad fat. What is the good and the bad fat? HDL is what we consider. The, so when you look at it, the HDL is what needs to be uh, no, normal and good. The LDL is the bad one that you don't want elevated. I mean, the less HDL you have, the more risk you have. Okay, the more healthy you have, the higher the risk. So your HDL, you want it to be a little higher than 50, at least 60 and above is, is healthy and good. If your HDL is very low, below 40, that's not good. You just get out from cholesterol and go to blood sugar. Uh, blood sugar is nothing more than glucose from in, in your blood. It comes mostly from the food you eat. So if you look at the middle number, the fasting blood sugar, from 100 to 125, uh, is considered pre-diabetes, but not necessarily, that's not the way we diagnose, it's been diagnosed, there are several things that have to be done. But when you have those numbers, when you wake up and have you've slept and, you know, fasted and it's still that, you have to begin to pay attention. If it's more than 126, you have to pay more attention, okay? So uh, the other thing I need to mention is hemoglobin A1C. So hemoglobin A1C is that blood test that your doctor will hold it to confirm truly what your blood sugar has been in the last three, three months. 
So when they check it, if it's below 5.7, uh, that should be normal. If it's between 5.7 and 6.4, then they will start doing something because they're pre-diabetes. And then if it's above 6.5, you are diagnosed with diabetes with some other things that needs to be done. So we need to uh, take, take, take caution of that. We can talk about other things later, but those are significant numbers. We share them of this information with you and you can review them and look at them later. Thank you and God bless you.
welcome this is the day the lord has made we will rejoice and we will be glad in it welcome 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 this is the 10 the final day of the first prophetic declaration in english from lagos nigeria in a minute it will be good morning from Lagos, Nigeria. My name is Idowu Aikulola, and I'll be coordinating today's program. Good afternoon for, to everyone that is still in the afternoon, from wherever it is that you are connected from. And good evening if you are connected in the evening. Praise the Lord. Let somebody shout hallelujah. I want you to just welcome someone on the chat group as well. Say welcome. God bless you. Today shall be a great day in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we begin today, we'll be having the opening prayers. And leading us today in the opening prayers is our daddy in MZIAF Nigeria, Evangelist Adedeji Adekusibe. Pastor Adedeji Adekusibe. You are welcome, sir. God bless you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for our daddy and our mommy, whom God has appointed to lead us in this special spiritual journey. May the Lord bless Daddy Mike, Mommy Gloria, and all our daddies in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for guiding us together again. We give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. Be exalted, Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we proceed today, let your presence go with us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Beloved, I want us to begin to thank the Lord God Almighty, who has been with us since the commencement of this journey 21 days ago. And today is the last day of this 21 days fasting and prayer. I want us to appreciate God for his goodness, for his mercies, and for his protection. Let us appreciate him for being with us and for seeing us through the first leg of this program this year. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 8, the Bible says that better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. So I want us to appreciate God let us thank the almighty God for the great and awesome things that he has started in our individual lives, in our families, and our different ministries. Let's open our mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Almighty Father, we thank you. We bless your name. We glorify you, O Lord God Almighty, for the great and awesome things that we have started in our individual lives, in our families, and even in the ministries. Thank you, O Lord God Almighty. We appreciate you. We give you glory for your presence that have continually been with us, for blessing us tremendously. Be exalted, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. I want also to thank God again for all the prophetic declarations that have been made over us, for they shall all come to fulfillment. No single one of them we fall to the ground without accomplishing the purpose for which God has sent it. So I want us to appreciate God for all the prophetic declarations, all the ministers that God has used. Let us appreciate God for their lives and for the word of God that has come out from their mouth. Open your mouth and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Almighty Father, we thank you. We bless your name for all the prophetic declarations that you have made over each and every one of us since the commencement of this program, even to today. Thank you, O oh Lord, for we know that none of, the, none of these declarations shall come without fulfilling the purpose for which it has been sent. Lord, we pray that no one shall fall to the ground without accomplishing your purpose in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We appreciate you even for all our fathers and mothers that you have used to, to, to make the declaration over our lives. We appreciate you, Lord, for their lives. We give you glory for the unction to function that you have released upon each and every one of them. Be exalted, O oh Lord. Be glorified, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks. 
I want us to also appreciate God for his grace upon our lives. Since the commencement of this program, we have no cause to be sorrowful over anyone. Let's appreciate God for sustaining us and for seeing us through. He that has begun a good thing in our life this year shall bring it to perfection even before the end of the year. Let's appreciate him for starting this journey and for being with us and sustaining us. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We glorify you, almighty Father, for this great spiritual journey that you have set our feet upon. We thank you, O Lord, for sustaining us. We thank you for seeing us through. We know that of a truth, you will see us through in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. According to the theme, restoration, and the biblical basis, Joel chapter 2, verses 25, from verse 25. Let me read quickly. I want us to pray that the, 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 the prophecy of the word of God from this passage of the scriptures, Joel chapter 2, verses 25 and 26, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts are eating, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you, and ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that are dead wondrously with you, and my people shall never be ashamed. I want us to pray, brethren, that this prophetic world will come to pass in our lives. These prophetic words will come to pass in our families. This prophetic world will come to pass even in our ministry. All of us, we shall enjoy powerful and bountiful restoration this year. All that we might have lost in the time past, that the power of God will restore them back unto us. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, this is your prophecies concerning us, concerning our family, concerning our ministries. Lord God Almighty, let them come to pass in our lives. Let them come to fulfillment. Restore unto us the years the conquer one at eating. Lord, let them be restored back unto us. Lord God Almighty, let your word come to pass in our life that we shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. We shall praise your name because you have dealt wondrously with us. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want us to pray. If the prophecies, all the declarations come to pass in our lives, we, 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 we are sure that our song will be like the song of David in Psalm 126 from verses 1 to 3. When the Lord restored unto David, all that he has lost. In Psalm 126, verses 1 to 3, David was able to declare that when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Beloved, I want us to pray that Lord, Fill our mouths this year with laughter. Turn again our captivity by restoring unto us all that we have lost in the time past. Let our mouth be filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Let each and every one of us, as a result of the restoration this year, sing new song in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray as a result of the prophetic declarations this year, O oh Lord. Turn again our captivity, restore unto us all that we might have lost in the time past. Let our mouth be filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. And let each and every one of us sing new songs this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Do great things for us in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And finally, I want us to pray that today, Lord, speak to rose again. Let your word be released expressly to us today. Prayers in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you will speak to us individually and collectively today. Let your word come expressly to us today and let each and every one of us 
be blessed through the word that will be released today in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We bless your name. We glorify you, O Lord God Almighty. Lord, we thank you for taking us through and bringing us thus far in these 21 days of waiting upon you. Lord, we pray that none of the prophetic declaration over us shall fall to the ground without accomplishing the purpose of which you have sent it in the name of Jesus. Let your word come expressly to us again today, O Lord. And as a result of the declarations, O Lord, we pray that we will sing a new song this year. You will fill our mouth with laughter and our tongue with singing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No one who has participated from every association, from every, from every city, from every town, from every country in this program, we go home unblessed in the name of Jesus. Let your word come to fulfillment in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father, for we pray in Jesus' mighty and wonderful names. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Adifusibe. The Lord bless you. The Bible says, let everything that has bread praise the Lord. Leading us in the praise tonight or this morning is Evangelist Anna Oyejino from the United States of America. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord accepts our praise and our worship in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you, Evangelisana. And leading us or reading the Bible reading tonight or this morning is Pastor Oak Urimolusi from the Republic of Ireland. You are welcome, ma. God bless you, ma. Good evening, ma. God bless you. Thank you so much, ma. I want to bless the name of the Lord for this uh, great day for the mercy of God that brought every one of us to this platform tonight. All thanks be to God. And I want to thank our daddy, Evangelist my Bamiloye, and our beloved mama, Mommy Gloria Bamiloye, for this privilege to serve God in this capacity. I do not take it for granted. Thank you so, so much, ma. And all our leaders, Pastor Jeremiah, Dari, and my coordinator, my prayer coordinator, Dr. Ulumide Patusi, and all our leaders, I appreciate the grace of God. I celebrate the grace of God upon your life. I pray that the Lord will hold every one of us in Jesus' name. Uh, our Bible reading for tonight's uh, declaration shall be taken from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. 2 Kings, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, thy servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him. Verse 2, unto him, my and Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything, anything in the house save a pot of oil. Number three, then he said, go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Verse four, and when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shalt pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There's not a vessel more. And the oyster, verse number seven, which is the last verse. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debt, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. This is the word of the Lord. May the Lord bless his reading in our heart in Jesus' name. Shalom. Thank Amen. you so much, my God bless you. Thank Amen. You. Thank you very much, Pastor Hopuri Molusi. And what we have been waiting for today is finally here, live from the country, Nigeria, our daddy in the Lord, Evangelist Mike Bamiloye of the Mount Zion Institute, will be taking the prophetic declaration. Please join me to welcome our daddy, Evangelist Mike Bamiloye. You're welcome, sir. Amen. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope you can hear me very well, please. Loud and clear, sir. Thank you very much. We give praise to God. We give honor to his name. For he has brought us to this point. We give praise to him. This is the 21st day. This is the 10th uh, prophetic and um, de declaration night for the month of Mary. We are grateful to God for what the Lord has done. We thank God for all the prophetic declaration and all the prayers that we have prayed. And we have come to the end of the fasting for January. Now, let us pray. Mighty Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor and adoration for great things that you have started to do in our midst. This January, you have laid a very solid foundation. And Father, throughout this year, we know that our life cannot remain the same because you have laid for us a very strong foundation. Father, Lord, we pray all the prayers that we have prayed this year, this month. Let it be established in the name of Jesus. Father, in this short word that will lead to the prayers, speak to us in the name of Jesus. 
In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Before we go to the prophetic declaration proper, I just want to share briefly with us for us to remember all what the Lord has spoken to us this year. I want, I want to, I want to, rem, I want to remind us of what the Lord said. Joel chapter 2, verse 24 and verse 25. Verse 24, it says, and the threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with oil and wine. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the vat shall overflow with new wine and oil. Then in verse 26 said, and I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillars and the palwa worm, my great army, said among you. If you notice those two verses, you will remember, you will, you will understand, you will observe that before the restoration is the floor flow with the, 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 the floor full of wheat, and then the vat overflowing with wine and oil. When you are talking about the, the floor full of wheat, you are talking about abundant harvest. And that is exactly what the Lord spoke to us at the beginning of this year. He said abundant harvest is in two. That is, the abundant harvest he spoke to us last year continues this year. Now, briefly, so before the after the abundant harvest, then the restoration. But let's look at the secret of the abundant harvest. There are two, there are three things that, that we see from those two verses. The floor full of wheat, then the vats overflowing with wine and oil, then the restoration, the king three. So between the abundant harvest and the restoration is the oil and the wine. But I want to speak briefly about the abundant harvest. What is the secret of the abundant harvest before we can get to the restoration? Number one, the first secret we want to observe is the secret of obedience. For every abundant harvest, if we are going to enter into that abundant harvest and we are going to experience full restoration, we cannot avoid, we cannot avoid, we cannot bypass the abundant obedience at his word. We have prayed, we have fasted, yes, but we cannot bypass obeying his voice. No matter the prayer we've prayed, no matter the number of the fasting we've had, we cannot bypass obedience. We can't bypass abundant obedience. Luke chapter, that passage we read in for Second King chapter 4, that we just read now, from verse 1 to 7. It's about the woman. The woman thought she had nothing. The woman told Elijah, oh, the slave master has come to take my sons, but your servant had nothing. Elijah said, Elijah said, tell me, what shall I do for you? What do you have in the house? What the Lord will do for you depend upon what you think you have in the house. But the woman said, I have nothing except a cruise of oil. Then Elisha said, go, borrow vessels, borrow not a few, pour the, from, the, from, from, the, from, the, from the cruise of oil into the vessels, set the full one apart. So the woman was to, was to obey a command, and that command was to borrow vessels, not a few. The instruction was so illogical. The instruction was so illogical. You have a very small oil, you have to borrow large vessels, number of vessels. You have to keep the being to poor. She has to do it by faith. She has to obey that instruction. And so she borrowed vessels. I don't know the number of vessels she borrowed. I don't know how many vessels she borrowed, but she borrowed vessels. She locked herself in with her sons. She was pouring according to the instruction given by the prophet. And the oil kept on pouring. Oil kept on pouring. And then when they came to the last vessel, the son said, there is no more vessel again. And then the oil ceased. Now we can see the power of obedience. The obedience brought the abundance of vessels that were filled with oil. If the woman had borrowed three times the number of that vessels, the oil will still keep on pouring. 
So what, what am I trying to bring out from here? If you want abundant obedience in this season that we have entered, if you want abundant and harvest, you must give the Lord abundant obedience. The more obedience you give unto the Lord, the more abundant harvest you experience. So if you look at the scripture, all through the scripture, we see that men of God, people of God, experience wonders and miracles, they pass through the gates of obedience. We are talking about the Red Sea parted into two, Red Sea parted into two. But there was something that Moses did before the Red Sea would part into two. The Lord told Moses, tell Israelites to go forward, but you raise up the rod in your hand. And Moses did the same thing. He did it. We are talking about that Moses in the, in the presence of Pharaoh. Oh, the rod of Moses swallowed and the, the rods of all the wizards. It is because of what the Lord spoke to Moses. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, when you get to the front of Pharaoh, with this rod, you perform the wonders. And so you cast it down. He cast down the rod. He obeyed. And then the Obey the Lord first and then leave God to do the rest. That is the secret. So number one secret of abundant harvest is obedience. Give God quality obedience. Don't be doubtful. Before you can experience abundant harvest this year, give God quality obedience. Now, secret number two, after obedience, if you look at the scripture, Different type of miracles we experience. The miracle of turning water to wine happened because obedience preceded it. Jesus Christ told the servant, feed the pot with water. And they fed the pot and they filled the pot with water. They did not argue. They didn't say, oh, it is wine they are looking for. They are saying you should fill it. After filling the pot with wine, Jesus said, serve it and they serve it. So look at all those commands and look at the obedience. After the obedience, the wine came. What will the Lord speak to you in this new season? We, are, we have entered the year now. We have worked the ground with the fasting. We are, we are going to continue in February. We'll continue in March. We'll do also in April. But in, a, in addition to all the fastings, in addition to all the prophetic declaration, you must not avoid obeying the voice of the Lord. Listen to what he says. Hacking to his voice. The Tarnomi chapter, chapter 28. Verse 1 and 2, the Lord emphasized obedience there. He said, And it shall come to pass, if you shall diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and carefully observe all that He commands you. He said, Behold, it shall come to pass. The Lord shall lift you all above all the nations of the earth. So there is a lifting when, when, when there is obedience first, there is a lifting above. When there is an obedience and carefully hearkening to the Lord's voice, be very, very eager and be ready to obey the voice of the Lord this year. There is no way one will experience abundance without, first of all, obeying his voice. There will always be command from the Holy Spirit. There will always be instructions from the Holy Spirit. When you hear the instructions, when you hear the commands, Get ready to obey whatever he says. Get ready to obey the Lord concerning your finances. Get ready to obey the Lord concerning your profession. Get ready to obey the Lord concerning your careers. Get ready to obey the Lord concerning your home, concerning your marriage, concerning your children, concerning your wife, concerning your husband. What is the Lord saying? When you hear what he says, get ready to obey without questioning him. Get ready to obey and give him quality obedience, abundant obedience that will produce abundant harvest. Secret number two, Proverbs chapter three, verse nine to 10. Secret number two, secret number two, Proverbs chapter three, verse nine to 10. And it says, honor the Lord with your possession, honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruit of all that you increase Verse 10, so your barn will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Don't forget Joel chapter 2, verse 24. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. 
Now, we can now see the base of the new wine and oil. You can see the base is now in this proverb, chapter 3, verse 9 and 10. That verse 10 says, So your barn shall be filled with plenty, and your vats shall overflow with new wine. New wine means power. New wine, new wine means new fresh ideas, fresh revelation, fresh creativity, new innovation in your ministry, in your calling. If you want to enjoy new innovations, you want to enjoy overflow of ideas and creativities, overflow of inventions in ministry, overflow of inspirations and revelations from God. Look at what the scripture says here. He said, honor the Lord with your possessions, with the first fruit of your increase, so your barns shall be filled with plenty, and your vats shall overflow with new wine. And if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 9, verse 6 to 8, he said, I say unto you, he who sow sparingly, we reap sparingly. He who sow bountifully, we reap bountifully. Now, <clears throat> what does that mean to us? It's the second secret of the abundance. You want abundant harvest? Give him abundant sowing. You can't escape it. You can't dodge it. You can't excuse it. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. Because he went the Lord God Himself. When the Lord God Himself, we want abundant children. He gave his only begotten son. When the, the Lord commanded Abraham, Give your son, your sacrifice him unto me. And the Abraham obeyed and he went to the mountain. As he was about to sacrifice him, the Lord said, Now I know. And now I know. Because you have not taken your you have, you have not taken your word. You, you have not taken away your son from me. Now I know. Then the Lord he knew the covenant said, In blessing, I will bless you. He said, Now I know. By myself, I swear. So the blessing of the Lord came upon Abraham. At the obedience. Number one, give the Lord quality obedience. Number two, give the Lord quality giving, quality sacrifice, quality sowing. If you look at the scriptures very well, whenever the Lord commands, whenever the Lord wants to bless his children, he would demand for sacrifice. Whenever the Lord wants to renew covenant, he would demand for sacrifice. Look, look at, listen to me very well, beloved children of God. There is no way you are going to be able to do massive exploit if God is not going to be able to touch your possession and touch your money and touch your finances and touch your sacrifices. Therefore, that is secret number two. You want your barn to be filled with plenty. You want, the, the, you want your vats to overflow with new wine. Honor the Lord with your substance, with the increase of your fruit, with the increase of your possession. Honor him with your possessions. Honor him with your substance. Make covenant with him. Make vows with him. Let him have, let him have access to your possession. Let him be able to touch your purse. Let him be able to touch your pocket. Let him be able to touch your possessions, your, 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 your possessions and your inheritances. Let him be able to touch it. There is the scripture. Then your barn shall be filled with plenty. How much is it that you are giving to God last year? And you are looking for abundance? Get ready to increase it. How much are you giving to him? Which will have you given to him? How, how have you given it to, to, to him? Increase it this year. Challenge the Lord. He said, trust me. He said, prove me with this. If I will not open the windows of heaven. So I want to challenge you. We are looking for abundant harvest. We are looking for abundant outpouring. Number one, give him quality obedience. Number two, give him quality sacrifice, quality given, honor him with your substance. And the Lord God is going to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Secret number three, abundant faith in him. Abundant faith in him. Abundant faith in him. Hebrews chapter five, Hebrews chapter 11, verse five, it says, by faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony 
that he pleased God. Verse 6 now says, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to him must believe that he is and that is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. The book of Hebrew chapter 11 is full of great men and women who walk with God by faith. By faith, by faith. He said, Noah prepared the ark by faith. Moses crossed the Red Sea by faith. The wall of Jericho fell down by faith. Even the Bible says that even, even Sarah received, received strength to conceive children by faith. So you now see tangible things, great things happen. Mighty abundance happen. Great things happen to God's children in the scripture, to God's servant, to great men of God of old by faith in the Lord. You can't escape this. You can't dodge it. So that is secret number three. Abundant faith. Whatever it tells you, trust him. Whatever covenant he made with you, believe him. Whatever he tells you to do, trust him. Whatever he says to you, accept and believe him. Get, don't follow him by, faith, by, by doubt. Don't exercise doubt. Don't exercise unbelief. He said, without faith, you can't please him. But you want to please the Lord? Then trust him. Believe him. It may be hard. It may be logical. But believe. Since he's the one that spoke to you, trust him. Believe him. So I've given you three secrets. Before we now go to the prophetic prayers, have the understanding that as we are entering into the year, we have entered into the year now, you want to enjoy abundant harvest and full restoration, give God quality obedience. Give God quality sacrifice. Don't hold back from him. Double your giving. Increase your giving. Prove him. You want to enjoy your, you want to enjoy your band filled with plenty? You want to enjoy overflowing of wine? Give him quality sacrifice. Give him quality faith. And therefore, I pray today in the mighty name of Jesus, everything the Lord had promised shall come to pass in your life in the name of Jesus. So I go back again to Joel chapter 2, verse 25. So I will restore to you the years that the swami locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, and the, and, and the chewing locusts, a great time that I set among you. I pray for you all through this year, 2023. I declare upon your life complete in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord shall restore unto you the years that the wasters have devoured and devourers have devoured in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord shall restore unto you the years that the enemy have stolen from your life. In the name of Jesus, the Lord shall restore unto you the virtues that have been stolen, the glory that have been stolen. In the name of Jesus, every gift that has died, every gift that you have before but has faded off, I pray this morning and I prophesy it shall be restored in the mighty name of Jesus. We are already under the covenant of restoration. Every dying gift shall be restored in your life in the name of Jesus. Every dead gift shall be brought back to life in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every dying relationship, every dying relationship, every sick relationship that we are worried about shall be restored back unto you. We are in the season of restoration. Every dying thing around you shall be restored in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Verse 28 says, and, and you shall eat in plenty Verse 26, he said, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied in the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Revelations of the Lord shall fill your heart in the name of Jesus. Revelations of the Lord shall fill your heart. Everything that is stolen, the desire that has stolen, the vision that you possessed before that has died, I command restoration upon your dying visions, upon your dead visions in the mighty name of Jesus. Ideas that you have before, that, has, that, you, that you possess before, but already fading off. You don't know how to handle it again. You don't know how to combine it again. I pray 
in the mighty name of Jesus, that the idea shall begin to come back again. The idea shall begin to be revived. New revelations shall fill your heart. New innovations shall fill your spirit. New ideas shall keep coming. If you are a script writer, new scripts shall keep coming up in the name of Jesus. If you are into production, you are into production. New technology, understanding of new technology, revelation of God's mind shall be to fill your heart. Divine creativity shall be to come upon you in the name of Jesus. And I pray upon you concerning your home, concerning your marriage, that the Lord shall reveal your marriage, shall reveal the love between you and your husband, between you and your wife, between you and your spouses. Your love shall be restored. Your love shall be restored. He shall become fresh again. The Lord shall fill your marriage with fresh wine in the mighty name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. The hand of the Lord shall keep you. I pray for all our children, all, of, all your children, all your children, wherever they may be, may they receive the revelation of God's mind in the name of Jesus. All your children shall wake up to serve the Lord. All your children shall arise to serve the Lord. Their interest shall grow in the things of the Lord. They shall love the things of God, and they shall serve the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He says, you shall, and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord. I prophesy upon your life, you shall eat in plenty and you shall be satisfied. When the world is going through famine, you will not experience it. When the world is going through economic recession, you will not experience it. The Lord God himself shall be your feet. The Lord God himself shall be your storehouse. The Lord God himself shall feed you, shall feed your family, shall replenish your purse. You will not, your, your account will not enter rage in the name of Jesus. Provision will come. You will not live by your salary at all. You will not live by your salary. You will not live by your salary. Abundance of God shall fill your purse in the mighty name of Jesus. Your life is not going to be dependent upon your income. No. The Bible says the Lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, not according to your salary, not according to your income. His riches in glory. There are ways that provision comes and you don't even know where it is coming from. Yeah, when, they, when, they, when Elijah was at the brook cherries, birds were bringing food for him in the morning. Birds were bringing food for him in the evening. Those are expe unexpected resources, unexpected source of food. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. In this season of restoration, resources shall come upon your life. Provision shall come. There shall be an open heaven over your life. You will not even know where the provision is coming from. Unexpected people shall be blessing you. Expected people shall bless you. Unexpected people shall bless you. People shall be coming. Angels of God shall arise and they shall serve in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, you shall eat in plenty and you shall be satisfied and you shall praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt with you bountifully. And then it says, and my people shall never be put to shame. Oh, I declare upon your life, no among the things that happen in your time, in your office, in your corporation, in your business, in your career, shall embarrass you. You will not be embarrassed. You will not be embarrassed. You will not be put to shame in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? Because we are in the season of restoration. Restoration of glory, restoration of virtue, restoration of honor, restoration of blessing. We are in that season. The umbrella covering your head is called restoration. The cloth you are wearing, the cloth you are wearing, is called restoration. Your shoes that you put on is called restoration. The house you are living in is called restoration. Every corner of your house, there is restoration there. The walls of your room is restoration. The fresh air you are breathing in is restoration. Everything around you is restored. Your blood is restored. Everything becomes new. The blood flowing in your veins has become refreshed. Is new again. The Lord has given you new organs. If you are having issues or problems with the organs of your body, it's going to be restored. Every part of your body is restored. The healing power of God has come upon you. You are going to be healed, completely healed. You are living in sound health. 
in perfect mind in this season of restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. So the Lord said, my people shall never be put to shame. You shall never be put to shame. You cannot be put to shame. You will not be disgraced. You are far from oppression. You are far from disgrace. You are far from shame. It is not your portion. Why? Because this is the season of restoration. It is a covenant God has made with us. And I've, I've shared with you some of the secrets that hold that covenant. You cannot be living in unbelief and enjoy this covenant. You cannot be living in lack of faith and enjoy this covenant. You cannot be living in lack of giving, holding back from God and enjoy this covenant. God had to test Abraham before the Lord could renew the covenant with him. He said, take your son, thy only son, which you love so much, and go and sacrifice him unto me on the mountain that I will show you. That's a test before the Lord could renew the covenant. From time to time, the test of the Lord will come upon you. Don't forget. Don't forget. Identify the seed from the bread this year. Don't eat the seed this year. Whenever things come to you, identify the seed which you have to plant to produce harvest for you. He said he will provide seed for the sower and bread for the eater. When the Lord provides seed for the sower, don't eat the seed. When the Lord provides bread for the eater, you can take the bread. Identify the bread from the seed. It is the covenant this year. Don't joke with it. There are things that work with the covenant. So don't joke with the covenant. Once again, I declare upon you, the hand of the Lord will keep you. The power of the Lord will sustain you. You and your children, you and your spouses, you will enjoy the goodness of the Lord this year. It is our season. It's a season of restoration. The Lord has given us that season and we are enjoying it and we shall walk with him. Your health is restored. Your finances are restored. Your virtue is restored. Your glory is restored. Your power is restored. Your health is restored. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dad. What an awesome way to end this 10 days prophetic declaration. Thank you so much, sir. Quickly, we'll be listening to the announcements. Please pay attention as the situation in the screen. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah! The Vision Carriers Global Missions are pleased to announce the Global Convention on our 20th anniversary. Tag New Wine. The event will take place both on site and online. The online event begins with the America and Canada region by Saturday, January 28, 2023. Time 6 p.m. West African time. Followed by the Europe region on Monday, January 30th, 2023. Time 6 p.m. West African time. Also, the Middle East and Africa region event will hold on Tuesday, January 31st, 2023. Time 6 p.m. West African time. The on-site event schedule begins from Thursday, February 2nd to Saturday, February 4, 2023. Venue, the Scripture Union Conference Hall, Samonda UI, Sango Road, Ibada. The arrival of guests begins on Thursday, February 2nd, 2023 by 4 p.m. Ministry, Evangelist Tony Fatusi, Evangelist Busayo Azekia, Pastor Mrs. Busola Olotu, Pastor Mrs. Ijoma Iba Ujoku, Evangelist Bola Adepodu, Evangelist Olubusola Ajayi, Pastor Mrs. Badru from USA, Chief Host, Evangelist Gloria Bamloe. Come, let's celebrate the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and obtain his new wine. Looking forward to see you here. The Mount Zion Institute Alumni International Fellowship announces her third official international Christian film festival from Tuesday, October 17th to Saturday, October 21st. The last two years featured exciting moments with several projects submitted from over 70 countries. This year we shall be celebrating diversity of faith-based films with projects made originally in French, Spanish, 
and several African languages. Submission opens on the 30th of January 2023 and is free for MZI AIF members. To submit your project, please visit mziaiffilmfestival.com or if you'd like more information, please email info at mziaiffilmfestival.com. Come join the fast-growing community of Kingdom Film Advocates who have placed Christ above their careers. Submit your movies now and take advantage of early bird opportunities. Now we'll be ending tonight's program or this morning's program by taking the closing prayers and leading us also once again in the closing prayers is our daddy, Evangelist Mike Bamelohi. Let's welcome daddy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. So we thank the Lord for everything that the Lord has done for us. God has done wonderful things for us. It has been beautiful this January. And as we enter into the year, we enter in the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to pray. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Lord for everyone that God has used for this prophetic declaration and the, that we have just completed. The 10 days prophetic declaration in the 21 the prayer and fasting. The another prayer and fasting begins again February 1, and the prophet is creation is 5 to 7 Sabia North. We want to thank the Lord for all the technical team that have worked day and night. The technical team, the media department, may the Lord bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that the Lord, that you, God, will bless all those people that you have used to put this program together. All the technical team, Father, the, the technical team, every one of them, Father, we pray that you will bless them and replenish their boss in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for all the media team that you will increase them on all sides. You will increase their wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. The music department, the MZDI Global Team, Global Music, may the Lord bless you all in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with you. We pray for all the members of the prayer department of Mozart Salomon International Fellowship led by Dr. Uh, Dr. Lumide Fatus. May the Lord bless everyone that is taking part in the prayer department. We want to, Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the translation team, the transcription team. May the Lord bless you all. May the Lord increase you and enlarge your cost in the name of Jesus. We want to thank the Lord, Father, for all the members, the technical department, all the regional coordinators, the regional coordinators, the country coordinators, everyone, including all the departmental heads, the health team, the film festival. We pray, Father, that you will bless everyone that is working day in, day out, secretly behind the screen, working, sweating, prayerfully, spending their money. Father, we pray this year that they shall experience complete total restoration in the mighty name of Jesus. All the, all the technical coordinators, all the event coordinators that have taken part in of this program, those we have seen, those we didn't even see, those who are working behind the screen, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. The hand of the Lord will keep you. The power of the Lord will sustain you. The Lord will replenish you on all sides and will fill you with his glory and power in the mighty name 
of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray for all the country coordinators of MCDIA, from all the country coordinators of the of more than 770 countries. We pray, Father, every one of us that you bless us, bless every one of them in the name of Jesus. Take care of their need, answer their prayers in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We want to pray, Father, for all our fathers, all the leaders of our fathers, the council members, starting from Pastor to the bedroom, and all our pastors and all our fathers. Father, we pray for perhaps for Sonjo Lukoju. We pray for, 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 for Pastor Jenabi. We pray for Pastor Festus, and we pray for all the leadership of Mozani Salomna International Fellowship, including all the regional heads, we pray, Father, sustain every one of us and keep us in your power and keep us in your strength in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We want to pray for all those who have joined us in this program, all those who joined us, all from other associations, all the association heads, we pray for you. The power of the Lord will keep you all through this year you will experience open heaven all through this year in the mighty name of Jesus. The president of Ansedram and all the executives of Ansedram, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord sustain you. The president of Nasidram in the U.S. and all the leadership of Nasidram, may the Lord keep you and sustain you all through this year. The president of UKCDMA and all the leadership, may the Lord beautify you and glorify himself in your life. All the president of CDMAC and all the executives of Christian of Christian Development Minister Association of Canada, may the Lord bless you, may the Lord beautify you, may the Lord increase His glory upon your life in the name of Jesus. On the president of Ireland, uh, the, the Transnational Association of Ireland, Egypt Transnational Association, and all others and all the members, all the fathers and the mothers of Mozion Faith Ministries International, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you and enlarge your coast. Oh, I pray, Father, that this year we shall experience total restoration in the name of Jesus. Let every one of us experience complete restoration from January to December in the name of Jesus. Let every dead thing begin to rise. Let every virtue rise up. Let every vision rise up. Let every idea begin to be ignited in us. In the name of Jesus, we, our life shall never remain the same. New vision, new revelation, new innovation for every ministry that are attached to Muzao Nisus Alumni International Fellowship and all our friends that have joined us on this platform. Receive blessing in your family. Receive blessing in your homes. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Please also let's look forward to Mount MZIF upcoming training workshops and se seminars that will be coming up. Stay tuned. The dates will also be announced on our different pages. Thank you so much to our dear leaders for this privilege to work tonight or this morning. Thank you so much. I have really, really been blessed. And with the permission of our leaders, I'd like for everyone to please unmute and shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 somebody shout hallelujah. Oh,